Come on, let the church say amen. Amen again, praise God. We thank God for another opportunity to be here, amen. There's so much is going on, and um, but yet still, he didn't let us suffer any hurt, harm, or danger. Psalm 91 say he won't allow it to come now your dwelling. Amen. So we thank God for being able, praise God, to move forward, uh, being able to preach the word, praise God, being able to pick up the Bible and read the word and study to show ourselves approved, like it say. So today, praise God, as we get ready to go into our service, amen, we want to ask today, praise God, for God's blessing. Amen. And a healing power, praise God, to touch those that have been affected with this COVID situation. You know, it's still here, praise God. Amen. We, one minute we're hearing that it's gone, and the next minute we're hearing that well, we can take lesser effort or make lesser efforts. And the next thing you know, praise God, we're, we're back in mask and mask being mandated. And then there's an argument between the CDC and the local government. But I read in the book of Isaiah, praise God. The Bible says the government be, shall be upon his shoulders. Amen. So we're all standing in his way, praise God. Those that are going out saying, you don't wear a mask in the midst of people dying all around them. And, and it, it's a lot going on, praise God, that we're having to deal with. And it's extra, praise God, because we're having to pray for folks who don't care. Amen. And they put their lives out there, praise God. But yet still... God is able, amen. And and Bible said that He's in control. Hey, praise God. And we have to believe that today, praise God, that God is in control. We also want to remember those folks I mentioned I heard mentioned earlier, the teachers, praise God, down in Florida, you know, the issues that they're facing. So we're gonna pray for them as well as teachers throughout the land, amen, because I feel that they're faced with the same situations, amen. And, so right now, Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this time, this service. We thank you, Lord, for these, your people. We thank you, Lord, for your touch. Father God, today we know, praise God, that you're healing hearts and you're healing minds right now. But, Lord, we just want to ask that you touch bodies as well and heal the physical conditions that are besieging our people. Amen. We want to ask you, praise God, Father God, that you go out and touch man's mind and their hearts, praise God, and let them make better decisions that they're making in this COVID situation. Amen. And those that have been touched, oh, Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, send your healing touch throughout this land, praise God. Amen. And whatever the situation may be, Lord, we know that we turn it over to you, that you're able to do just what you said you was going to do. So, Father God, open blind eyes, touch deaf ears, and, Lord, send comfort to those that have lost loved ones, Father God, throughout this land. So whether they be family, whether they be our friends, Father God, we ask that you come now. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen again. We thank God for this opportunity to be here. And we are set in the middle of a lot of what's going on around this land. Amen. Some folks just want to do what they want to do. They want to do it how they want to do. But the Bible says, praise God, as you begin to read and we do what God tell us to do, we'll find out, praise God, that these things have happened before. Amen. Maybe it was in a different time or maybe it was in a different place. Amen. But there's nothing new under the sun. Praise God. Amen. But today, praise God, if we could, we want to ask you to turn with us to the book of Matthew. Amen. The book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Amen. And, and how many of you know, praise God, that you got to be careful what you say, how you say, and who you say it to these days. Amen. It's almost like you got to have a politically correct dictionary every time you make a statement. See, folks will get mad and get their feeling hurt. I mean, and you have no ill intent at all. Amen. So we gotten to the point these days, praise God, that you were with good intentions, want to say the right things. Amen. But it's perceived, praise God, according to cultures. It's perceived, praise God, according to we people live. And it's perceived, praise God, according to how they just feel that day. 
Amen. So you look at the news, praise God, and they make a statement on the news now. And all of a sudden, praise God, a hundred people attack. I mean, you know, and everything that they just said. And, and, and I don't believe, praise God, that there are that many people who get on national TV and deliberately insult somebody. Well, we know one. Anyway, praise God. But, you know, it's gotten to the point now where, praise God, just whatever you say, whatever you call uh, I mean, it said the Cleveland Indians it, it no longer can be the Cleveland Indians, and the Washington Redskins can't be the Washington Redskins anymore, and the Florida Seminoles, amen, because you know, it, it's a direct confrontation or a direct affront, praise God, to somebody's national character or national origin, praise God. So it, it's gotten to the point, praise God, that we have to be careful how we say what we say and who we say it to. Amen. I, I was reminded, praise God, of a story. And before I go there, praise God. Did we told you to go to the book of Matthew? 15th chapter? Verses 21 through 28? I have to make sure I stay in order. <laughs> Amen. Matthew, praise God. 15th chapter. Verses 21 through 28. Amen. And, and we were talking, praise God, about people getting angry about what you say, how you say it, and who you say it to. And I was reading, and this pastor, he said that he had his members, a couple of his members, a couple come to him, and they were praying that they had a child. And they wanted him to pray for them so they can conceive a baby, praise God, and, and have the child. So he said, out of curiosity, and the next question would be, how long have you been married? And immediately the lady said, oh, we're not married. We just want a child. In other words, praise God, are you judging me because I'm not married and want a child? And he said, that's some of the things that go along with the questioning, or, or should I say the interview, praise God, when a young couple come to him. So in other words, praise God, I, I imagine when he asked them, you know, were you married or how long were you married? He was attacking their sensibility of whatever. So in other words, he's warning us, praise God, that word is that we have to be careful of what we say to who we say it to, even though it was the right thing to ask them. You know, how long have you been married? And I imagine he meant nothing of it. He just needed to know. But they were so sensitive, praise God, to their situation that they took it the wrong way. And so many times, praise God, we... we we see instances where things are taken out of context and, and things are taken the wrong way. You know, for the longest, praise God, we put off doing videos and releasing videos of YouTube and, and, and Facebook and, and Instagram because, you know, as soon as you put those things out there, praise God, people have a tendency, <laughs> amen, to get a little angry and to get a little upset about some of the things you're saying, but yet still you put yourself out there. So even though we don't ignore them, we entertain them, and we put them in the area that they belong to. I, I think one day I read one where one man was upset because we used the term Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. And, and I said, well, you know, when you look at it, think about it. You know, anger made you miss the whole message. Amen simply because you chose to pick up on one thing and in your anger you missed the concept or the purpose of the whole mess it could have been the best message in the world it could have been just right what for you but in your anger you chose to miss it amen so we find out praise god that even in this platform that we in you know we have to be continually right with the word of god amen so what we have to do is praise God is pray that Lord lead me, you know, whatever I say, be the right thing for the right people. Amen. And that I don't offend anyone, praise God, that it be sensitive, you know, to the culture and to the nature. Amen. You know, I, I heard once they say the right thing to say may not be always the right thing to say. And, and I don't want to offend anybody right here, but you've heard the story of the ugly duckling. Amen. Yeah, the ugly duckling grew into a beautiful swan. Amen. Yeah, but at that point, praise God, would it be right to say that's an ugly duck? 
Amen. So like I said, right now, praise God, I don't want to offend any of the duck lovers of the world. But the right thing to say may not always be the right thing to say. But we want to move on today, praise God, if we would. The book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, praise God, and the 21, verses 21 through 28. And we want to see how Jesus dealt with some folks, praise God, who totally took things out of concept, amen, and in the right means or the right mode, praise God. And praise God, we want to pray for understanding for those who hear the word of God. Amen. amen. Go ahead. Amen. Then Jesus went thence, mm -hmm. departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Yes. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Mm. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Mm -hmm. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. My God, amen. amen. Mm. amen. In verse 26, he said, But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Amen. amen. And for our message today, praise God, if we could. Uh, I would like to title it, if I could, praise God, is I'll be satisfied with the crumbs. Amen. I will be satisfied with the crumbs, praise God. Amen. So Jesus found himself in a situation, praise God, and you've heard this message preached several times before. Amen. And everybody had their own idea of what Jesus meant when he told that woman, praise God, amen, that he that it wasn't meat for him to give the children bread to the dogs, amen. And, and some say that he was calling her a dog, and some say that he was trying to be nice and using the, one of those um, similes, in other words, something that sounded like a dog, but it wasn't a dog, amen. Somebody said, hey, listen, it wasn't a big old yard dog. It was just a little house dog, and and, and in doing so, that makes a difference, praise God. But Jesus found himself in a situation, praise God. He had, he had just come over, praise God, the Bible said, into a different area, praise God. And it was right after, amen, the beheading of John the Baptist. And I imagine he was not quite himself, amen, or not to give him an excuse. You know, Jesus doesn't need an excuse to say amen. But it was also, praise God, that after that, he got into a confrontation with the scribes and the Pharisees in the earlier verses you see there, praise God, when Jesus was talking with them and they confronted him, praise God. And how many of you know, um, <laughs> Jesus, amen, you know, that the term clap back, you know, it wasn't just invented because Jesus clapped back a whole lot longer time ago, amen. <laughs> And in other words, you know, now they're saying he say he was throwing shade. Oh, uh, you know, if you read the, ver the verses, praise God, Jesus was throwing a lot of shade. And it would happen a long time before now. So in other words, as you read the Bible, you find out, praise God, that all these things that happened, they've already happened before, praise God. And uh, somebody just chose to change the name. Amen. So but anyway, and the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they came to Jesus and Jesus sat them in there place, praise God, and um, they weren't quite mad about it, weren't quite happy about it, so his, his, his disciples came to him and they said, don't you know, praise God, what you said upset the scribes and the Pharisees, amen, so you've got to be careful these days now, praise God, because we're not Jesus and we don't possess that authority nor power that we should, but, you know, folks just don't like the way you say things sometimes, so in other words, praise God, and they, they, they got angry at him, amen. He didn't get angry, but anyway, he put them in their place. And when he did, praise God, 
I mean, it offended them. You know, have you ever had to say something to somebody, praise God, and, you know, you were, you had compassion, amen, and, and, and you felt that you were right in saying that, praise God. You know, you prayed about it, and everything seemed to come to you, praise God, and then you said, well, this is what I have to say about it, and then they took what you had to say, and then all of a sudden, praise God, you got another argument. You know, and I find that being in the pastor's or the minister's role, praise God, often we're, we're, we're called upon, praise God, to perform weddings or, or, or do weddings for people, amen? And in doing so, the first thing you have to do, or we do, we sit down with the wedding couple long before the wedding happens, praise God, so you can be in counsel to make sure that, you know, they're following the, the, the scriptures or following the word of God. I mean, we don't want to judge, but we just want to make sure you're doing it according to what the scriptures say. And, and often we find out, praise God, that the couple that come to you, amen, and they want to be married, praise God, they're about to get married, but then they, in the counseling you find out that they're living together. Amen? So, Although you have to counsel them in spiritually guide them in the wedding, praise God, you have to also stop and entertain the elephant in the room that we're living together. Amen. And Jesus said, uh, you know, marriage is honorable. Amen. And that's good. He said, but right now, praise God, let's deal with the problem that you're in. In other words, you're sinning, living together. And folks will take that, praise God, and and in and, and, and a, and a way and such, praise God, that, you know, you're judging us on who we are. You know, we're accountable to God and not man. And I said, but if you was accountable to God, then you'll find out, praise God, that you were sinning. So it's not judgment, but it is the right thing to say. Praise God. Amen. But Jesus found himself in a situation where this woman came to him. Praise God. Her daughter was ill. I mean, it says she was demon possessed. Praise God. And. I imagine it makes her act up in school and, you know, she went to work, praise God, and make her do things that work that don't work out. And, 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 you know, in other words, she was just a mess to be around. Amen. So she was praying for her daughter and she went to Jesus because she knew, praise God, she had heard that Jesus was the man that, you know, that, that Jesus raised the dead. Amen. And he healed the sick, praise God. And, and the Bible says that even if he came down out the mountain, all the folks came to him and then brought him all the lame and those that were hurting and the issues. And the Bible said that he healed them all, praise God. And I imagine she got to the point one day where she heard about this, praise God, and, and she knew this Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says she met Jesus, praise God, on the road. And, and when she did, praise God, she fell before him and she was telling the issues about her daughter and how her daughter was possessed. Amen. But then Jesus as the Bible said, he paid her no attention, amen. He kept walking, amen. And it describes, and I mean, his, his disciples came to him and said, listen, this woman is bothering us, praise God. You know how the woman, they talked about the woman, she went before the king and they said, Lord, just, just take care of her and let her go away. And, and, and like the folks, he said, when they're feeding the 5,000 in the desert, he said, we don't have enough food for them. Just, just, just send them all to the scribe. I mean, the, the Pharisees or, or should I say his disciples, praise God, had the mentality of the problem is just send it away. So they were telling Jesus, just send her away, you know, or either, listen, just go ahead on and send her a healing, a heal her daughter, praise God, and everything's going to be all right, and she's going to be out of the way. But Jesus ignored the woman, praise God, and, and a lot of people are saying that, you know, it, it was a rough thing, praise God, that you to go to God, amen, and you pray it and all you can pray, and you trust him and believe him, and he doesn't answer you. And if you've ever had to pray, praise God, in the middle of the night, in your pain and your suffering, or you lost a loved one, praise God, and you trusted and believing in him, that everything was going to be all right, praise God, and you called on his name, and nothing Happen. He doesn't answer, praise God. And you're wondering, praise God, what's going on? Like, like Job, praise God. Job prayed and prayed and he did all kinds of things that he can do, praise God. But yet still, he said, Job never got an answer from God, amen. So we find ourselves, praise God, the same way today, amen, that we stand, praise God, in the midst of our problems, in the midst of our trials, praise God, and we go to him, praise God, but Jesus never answers, amen. 
So she asked him, praise God, constantly, and she, she called him master, amen, and she, she, she must pretty much she humbled herself to him, praise God. And I was reading back, and I looked back in verse 24, and the Bible said, but he answered and he said, he said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. Which prompted a question, praise God. Amen. If this woman was praying to him, amen, if she had already acknowledged his deity, you know, she already called him master and Lord. Amen. At this point, praise God, we have to ask ourselves, who then are the lost sheep of Israel? Amen. In, in other words, praise God, she was not there fighting him. Amen. She was not there debasing and calling them names. Amen. She was calling him Lord. She was calling him Master. She was looking forward to him, praise God, to laying his hands on her daughter. In other words, this woman had enough faith to believe that God is able to do just what he said he was going to do. Amen. Amen. So he got to the point, praise God, when he looked and he told her, he said, well, listen, I, I, I'm just not, I'm just sent, you know, but for the Lord's sheep. Amen. And then the Bible said that she came and worshiped him, saying, she said, Lord, help me, praise God, amen. So many times, you know, it's easy to call somebody a sinner, but if they show up in church on Sunday morning, praise God, saying, Lord, I realize I'm in the wrong place, amen. I realize that this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, and I repent. Praise God, of my problems and my trouble, praise God. At that point, praise God, who is the sinner, amen? Mm. You've heard that speaking in tongue is a sign for what? The oh, those that unbelief. In other words, praise God, if you speak and are you unbelieving at that point, praise God. So this woman called on and she said, Lord, my master and savior, praise God. She knew, praise God, that who he was. And we got to ask ourselves today, praise God, those lost sheep of the house of Israel, who have they become now in this day's purpose, praise God, amen. We got folks showing up, amen, at the house of God, amen. He said, I need communion, praise God. If you got to the point, if you realize you need communion, praise God, we're going to have to keep asking ourselves, who are the lost sheep, amen. Even if you're sitting up in the middle of the church, amen, hallelujah. Everybody ain't there to do right. Amen. He said, just like we told you about the story in the beginning, this couple came and said, Lord, we need you to pray for us to have a baby. And when he told them they weren't married, praise God, he said, but yet still, amen, we know, amen, in our wrongdoing enough to ask for prayer. We don't know what God's going to do in the lives of those folks, praise God, who open up in faith and open up in prayer and go to God and ask him, Lord, save me. Father, help me in the midst of my trial. Even the man that went before Jesus and he was praying for his son, praise God, he said, Lord, I believe, praise God, amen, but help my unbelief. He said, there's a part of us, praise God, that accept everything you say. There's a part of us, praise God, that accept what you want to do, praise God. He said, but Lord, he said, I believe. In other words, I got doubts, amen. He said, I got shortcomings, praise God. I don't do everything right, amen. He said, I believe in you, Father, but help my unbelief. Give me the strength to keep on trusting you. Amen. And this woman showed up before Jesus, praise God. And when she went there, they, say, they call her a, a, what was it, a Canaanite woman. He said, in other words, one of those Gentiles, amen, one of those Syrophoenicians, praise God, that mixed breed of people that wasn't Jew, praise God. And you know, the Jews thought they were the only people right at that time. He said, but this woman, praise God, with her background and her culture, praise God, she was like that man that said, I believe, but help my unbelief. He said, look past the fact that I might be mixed race. Look back the fact that I might be a Gentile. And I know, praise God, you said you came to the Jews first. He said, but listen, I'm calling on you right now. So and he said, the Bible said oftentimes that Jesus had compassion on those that came to him. He didn't stop to qualify whether they were Jews or Gentiles. He said he had compassion. Amen. So we got to realize, praise God, amen, that we can't judge folks. We can't call names, amen. And yes, we do have to be careful how we speak, but then how we speak, praise God, has to be the word of God. And, and, and the Bible said that that word is going to cut like a two-edged sword. It goes to and fro. Yes, yes, yes. In other words, it puts me under the same blade when I speak. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Ah, Lord. So Jesus, 
met with this woman, amen? And the first thing he said, he said, listen, he said, is it not meat to give the children bread and cast it to the dogs? Amen. So, you know, we read the story and it tells us in history that it wasn't real big dogs and explain about the little dogs. And during that time, praise God, everybody had little dogs that kept around the house and, and, and the dogs were familiar with their masters. Amen. And, and, and the dogs was like, they often got things that they didn't deserve. Ooh, that sounds just like us, doesn't it? We often, God often gives us what we don't earn, what we don't deserve. He said, if you're just a little dog walking around the house and they look at him, here, eat that. Amen? So it wasn't dinner time or it might have been a bad dog, but it fed you anyway. And he said, and the dog crawls up around the table, praise God, and, and next thing you know, praise God, they're eating the crumbs that fall off the table, amen, and, or somebody, a little kid, just feeding them under the table. So in other words, praise God, those leftovers come in handy. But he said, but the little dog, he said, the mentality of the little dog, they know their master. Amen. He said, the dog comes in the house and you see him walking around. And next thing you know, he's sitting at your foot. And the next thing you know, he's up on your lap. And the next thing you know, you're patting him and rubbing. So in other words, that dog, that little bit of dog often gets the things that they don't deserve. Amen. So this woman said, Lord, I understand. Amen. That you came to feed the children. He said, but if you're feeding them, whatever falls off the table is good enough for me. <laughs> she said, I'll be satisfied even with the crumb because if it come from you, it has to be good. Glory, Amen. So this woman, praise God, when Jesus said, I came to feed, you know, but the feed, you know, the, the, can't give it to the dogs. She did not become offended. Amen. A lot of people say, ah, if she called me a dog, I, I would have been, you know, <laughs> remember Jesus had to clap back. But anyway, praise God, she didn't get her feelings hurt. Amen. She became more humble. She became more faithful, praise God. And she realized that he was doing all that he could do. Amen. In, in other words, she didn't stop the word by what you would call. In other words, like we were telling her, she didn't miss the whole message because she was offended by one word. Amen. So she understood, praise God. And Jesus, praise God, commended her for her faith. And the Bible said right there in that very hour, amen, that immediately her daughter was healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody looking for a healing today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, but you become upset because I tell you that what you're doing doesn't fit in the kingdom of God. Somebody is looking for a healing for their child or for their family or for a broken heart or even a mended mind, praise God. But you get offended because I said something that you didn't like. Amen. Somebody, praise God, is looking for a breakout situation today, praise God, to get back to living a normal life. Amen. To doing the things that we can do. But see, you got offended, praise God, because you heard something in church one time. So therefore, praise God, you don't want to go anymore. Amen. So you let that one word, praise God, change your whole situation. But if you got to be like this woman, praise God, who realized, amen, that where I came from, praise God, even that little bit that God has given out is going to be enough for me, praise God. She said, I'll be satisfied with even the crumbs that fall from that table, amen. She said, I'm not going to put myself up there, praise God, and think that I'm all of that, praise God. She said, I'll take what you give me, bro, because the little bit that you give is going to end up being more than enough in my life, praise God. So I believe, praise God, that if we go to God today, strip ourselves of our pride, strip ourselves, praise God, and come to him with humbleness and humility, praise God. And we start to sacrifice, giving up the sacrifice of praise, calling him Lord and Jesus, praise God. Tell him that we understand, praise God, that we have to first align ourselves with you, amen. And Lord, whatever you say, praise God, is not going to offend me because I know, praise God, that you're right in all you say and all you do. I believe, praise God, that if we go to him, praise God, calling on him, amen, laying ourselves out before him, praise God, and like that woman, praise God, Jesus said, that faith that you displaying, daughter, he said, that's more than enough for me, amen. He said, now you go home, praise God, because everything is in set in order. Somebody's going to get up today and start going to their home, praise God, 
And you're going to find that God has already worked it out simply because, praise God, that you chose to believe the word of God. Simply because you put yourself out there, praise God, and accepted what God had to say, praise God. Sometime, praise God, your blessings, praise God. Sometime, praise God, that your release, amen, comes with a little rebuffing, amen. It comes with a little understanding, praise God. It may look a little rough in the beginning, praise God. But I'm asking you and calling it right now. Let us look past that roughness. Let us look past that name calling and see that God has already worked this thing out. He said, because, praise God. And here's the kicker. He said, I'm looking for something in her, praise God. He said, if she got the heart to take insults, she got the heart to take understanding, praise God. She got the understanding, praise God, to realize that I'm nothing to do with her but for the best, amen. When Jesus looked at that woman, he said her faith to withstand the onslaught of insults, amen. He, he said the name calling, praise God. He said she didn't let none of those things hurt, praise God, because she showed a heart for God. Hallelujah. She showed, praise God, that underneath the name calling, praise God, underneath her heritage growing up, praise God, underneath, praise God, the Bible says she took her baby and asked God to heal her, amen. And then the first thing people are going to say, well, where's your husband? So in other words, praise God, that she was a sinner woman and an instant, praise God, without a child and no husband. So in other words, praise God, some people will say she got what she had coming. But Jesus said, come unto me. <laughs> all. He didn't say white, black, green or yellow. He said, all, praise God, amen. And this woman took him at his word, praise God. She put down who she was. She put down what she was. She said, like that woman with the issue of blood, she said, whatever it is, praise God, if I can just get to him, praise God, amen. We need to be like those women, praise God. If we can just get to him, put off everything, praise God, that are hindering us. Take off that garment, praise God, that's holding us back, praise God. Expose ourselves to God, praise God, and show him, praise God, that we care, Lord, and I'm not going to miss, praise God, getting saved. I'm not going to miss being healed, praise God. I'm not going to miss all the wonderful blessings you have for me, praise God, simply because you way you said it. Ah, uh, there's some people right now, praise God, so, uh, I ain't never going back to that church. I don't like the way he talked. And can you imagine, praise God, when he asked me where we were married, did you see that look on his face? That mean he was just judging us, praise God. Some people, praise God, miss the whole message, amen, because you've offended them. You can see it, praise God. If you're speaking in a big church, praise God, or to a congregation, and all of a sudden, praise God, nobody wants to raise their hand. Everybody looks like they're ready to go to sleep. Somebody had just been offended. They got their feelings hurt, praise God, and they missed the part, praise God, when Jesus was saying, praise God, put yourself in his hands, amen, and he's going to handle everything everything including praise god how you feel about the word of god praise god everything you say praise god or how you feel about the man who spoke that word praise god like that woman praise god she said lord you are right she said truth lord i might be praise god amen she said but i'll be satisfied with the crumbs that fall from the table amen truth praise god i'm not gonna miss my blessing by being called a dog praise god i'm not gonna miss my blessing by being considered a sinner praise god she said i'm not gonna miss it praise god she said truth lord yet the dogs eat the crumbs which falls from the master's table praise god and she said i'm gonna be satisfied with those crumbs somebody need to shout hallelujah amen somebody need to shout praise him praise god because they said, Lord, take me out of myself. Remove these feelings from me, praise God. And let me be blessed, praise God, amen. Even in the midst of the trials of my tribulations, praise God. In the name calling, amen. I need to see Jesus because I need to be blessed. Somebody praise him. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm. Don't miss the message by getting upset. 
Don't miss the message by getting angry. Amen? Because God has already worked this thing out in your life. Amen? But the more you're angry, you know, the Bible tells us, be angry and not sin. Amen? But if you get angry and keep on going, amen, you're missing your blessing. I mean, you, you, you're tying God's hand at that point. Praise God, amen. But Jesus met this woman, and like I said, a lot of people think that it's the most rudest thing that you could ever do. But it wasn't that. Sometimes in the Bible, you've heard them talk about tested. You're talking about trials. Jesus was looking to see, amen, if she was willing to offer what it takes to heal her daughter. Amen. So some of us, praise God, have situations right now that we asking God to heal. We asking God to deliver. We asking God to change. Amen. But we're going to him and he's not ignoring you, but he's waiting to see if you're going to go that extra mile. He's going to see if you're going to make the commitment. And when that woman did, praise God, hallelujah. He blessed her and healed her daughter. So if you're looking for healing in your home today, consider this message, praise God, that I'll be satisfied with the crumbs. Amen. In, in, in other words, Lord, uh, you don't have to give me the new car. Just give me one. You don't have to give me the biggest house on town. Just let me have a place to live. Amen. I don't need all the money. Enough to get by. Amen. And this woman, she said she left her pride home. She became humble. She buried herself before God, amen. You know how folks used to say, she didn't get up with it. <laughs> amen. She had to let that stuff go if she wanted her daughter healed. Amen. And that's why we stand today, praise God. We're holding on to too much in order for God to work it out in us. Amen. We're holding on to too much. Praise God. Amen. So if you, you got a need today, you know, we're going to ask that you come unto him today. Amen. Humble. You know, broken. You know, some folks say trite. Discouraged. Let down. Amen. Believe that an armor of pride. Home. You know, when that woman, she could have said, Jesus, when she met him on that highway. And this is not in the Bible, y'all. <laughs> she could have said, listen, I know you came to feed the children, the, the Jews first, amen? But she could have gotten real, real street and said, now you standing on this street with me right now. Amen? Ain't nothing going to hurt you. To give me a little blessing. Amen. But she would not have let go of everything. She'd have been still living according to the world. Amen. But Jesus didn't answer her. Just like a lot of us are not getting answers right now. He wants to see your heart. Amen. He wants to see, praise God, how much you trust and believe in him. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah, so now if I said enough today, you got mad at anything I said, don't miss the message. Being satisfied with even the crumb. I want to reiterate that, amen. And we take the rest and take it to God. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for this service. We, we thank you, Father God, for being with us and keeping us, amen. And whew, uh, we shot past our time as always. But we praise God for understanding. And listen, we want to put before us, oh, Lord, we want to, we want to lay down our armors right now. We want to lay down our pride and, and our uppity in this. Amen. We want to ask you again, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you begin to touch those that are sick right now. Build their bodies up, Father God, in Jesus' name. Touch those that are waiting on the word from doctors, amen, and, and what they have to say. And we ask that you bring peace and comfort, Lord, and let everything be well according to your will and according to your way. We want to ask you, Lord, right now for those that are disturbed in their hearts and in their minds, 
that you bring peace, Lord. Help them to make better decisions and understand the way of the world, Lord, and, and how you've already ordained it. And Lord, for those that are lost loved ones, Father God, we ask that you bring peace to their hearts and their home right now. Let them know, Lord, that you're Lord and Lord alone. Amen. And that when we come to you, Father God, we got to forsake the world, trust and believe in you. And I believe, praise God, according to your word, everything is going to be all right. So today, Lord, as we settle and be satisfied with what's coming our way as long as it's from you, we ask that you send a blessing right now into this land. Heal, Father God, deliver and set free. Lord, we ask that you work out this COVID situation as we come to you. And as every church and every member that begins to pray right now, I believe that when you hear this word, wherever it is and whenever it is, that if you just say a word of prayer, praise God, ask God to heal it. And ask God, first of all, Lord, to make you more humble and more spiritual and that we begin to follow you. Father God, these things is all that we thank you. We ask your blessing. And we say unto you now to him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Come on, praise God, and we ask you. Thank you, Lord. And we ask that you consider yourself dismissed. Amen? Amen. Thank you.